did that. I needed that more than you could ever understand. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, that was another reason too. Like I was really, you know, um, with the pod, with, with the pod too, like I've had some, I've began to kind of reach out back to like repeat guests and people to try to bring them back. And you've definitely been top of the list. You know what I mean? Um, that podcast I do listen to frequently. And there's always like when people are like, Oh, really? shoot me like, Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and I'm telling you like those affirmations he gave me, I'm telling you just to hear it in real life time. Um, yeah. and, and just kind of hear like, you know, there's always... like layers to it. Like it shows up in different ways every time there's like a whole new deeper message. Every time you go back to it, ain't that crazy? Yeah, like the whole like the whole thing of interpretation to me yeah. has became a has became a big thing. And so sometimes rereading books, rewatching shows, you know, listening to lectures or or things that may have inspired me before. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we get older and we get a little more wise, get some more dirt under our fingernails. And right. it's like, let me re-listen to this thing and, and, and see where it takes me all over again. And so, yeah. so thank you. Thank you for being you, Kayla. I, I want to make sure I say that. Thank you for being you, man. But what's new with you these days? What, are you, what you got going on? Oh, man. Um, like a whole lot of nothing and everything all at the same time. Mm. So um, I, I, <laughs> I truly mean it when I say I'm no longer defined by time. <laughs> Wow, because yeah. I I don't necessarily live by a sense of the 24 hour clock or the days of the week or like like I'm still kind of living in July, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, it, it, like when I, I realized it was August and I was like, y'all, like I knew it was August, but like I just realized it's August like the, almost the end of the year like we're we're so far ahead of where i'm at right now so i've so i i measure my time by landmarks now yeah we were talking and about that. yeah and and so um i call it life before the lost colony mm -hmm. the first lost colony the first time post colony lost colony the second time life after the lost colony <laughs> so ever since the lost colony um i have like both times were uh going there were extreme experiences for me mm -hmm. and so um so i had to recoup from those experiences so I've taken the time and it's, it's taken about a year to really delve into my physical health, my mental health. I thought, but here's something interesting. I thought I was having mental health issues. Come to find out I was having brain health issues. Oh, wow. My brain wasn't getting the nutrients, the vitamins, the minerals that it needed. Mm -hmm. So I had to go on that journey. And as soon as I found the right supplement, my brain shifted. Oh, wow. And guess what the supplement was? What was it? A beef, a beef liver supplement. Beef liver? Beef liver. Girl, what yeah. was going on? I mean, what was, what was happening? The COVID shot effed me up. Like, I'm talking about effed me up. Okay, I, I, I was able to pinpoint it almost to the day of when I shifted, when I changed, mm -hmm. um, because it was like uh, after or, or at the beginning of Lost Colony, the first time I was a woman in my power, I was, you know, you know, taking strides and, and at the height of my career and, you know, doing mm -hmm. very well for myself. And mm -hmm. then everything came crashing down. Like mm -hmm. time stood still during col each colony, right? Mm -hmm. Time stood still there. And then everything would come crashing back in that I would now need to deal with. And mm -hmm. uh, then ha after um, I didn't get the, 
COVID shot till almost the end of Lost Colony number one or okay. first year. And I, I can see where my personality started to shift. I started to get more emotional. I started to get paranoid. I started to get scared. Um, I, I started like all of these, uh, th these fears and paranoias and all of this that started to come up. So I had to, I, I suffered with that, all of that, um, and, and doing a lot of energy clearing and a lot of meditation, a lot mm. of getting back to what is myself and facing a lot of excruciating pain. And then once, once I was able to get through that, then I was able to understand who I was again and get back solid within me. I took myself through my, my own whole therapy process. And um, once I was able to get stable and, and with the help of my friend Mariah, who's a great nutrition coach, she, she and I worked together and, and we, we were able to, I, I was able to actually shed everything off of me all like cultural limitations and, and preconceived notions, um, uh, still going through these conversations, which I can't wait to talk about these conversations of like the um, modern woman, traditional man conversation. Mm -hmm. That's something that I've got so much to talk about <laughs> and so much perspective on. Um, and uh, so all of these uh, the, these preconceived notions of who I was and, mm -hmm. um, you know, down to my personality and how I act with other people and, you know, um, and I, I was able to find my true authentic self. Nice. I was able to find who I was, my own preferences, my own boundaries and not boundaries to keep people out but boundaries to just understand like who I am and what I'm about and you know, what I stand for. So I make sure mm. now that I go into every scenario knowing who I am as a person and what I stand for and being very clear on that. So that way, mm -hmm. if I go into a situation that is tricky, I don't have to maneuver how to be in this room. I can just be me and you will not cross me. Oof. Lovingly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> me, me, and, me, and one, me and some of the guys had talked about that on a podcast and, and we brought up boundaries, right? That was something that we talked about. And um, I think, and I said it then and I'll say it again, is it got hijacked. You know, that word got hijacked as a sense mm -hmm. of control, right? And the word got hijacked to, to make people think that circumstance like circumstantial behaviors right and and these things right are all a part of boundaries and it's like no i think that boundaries is you know inside this circle is peace right and i don't want to have to cross over this boundary to appease you right and i don't want you mm -hmm. crossing over this boundary just to appease me if you're outside of my boundary then you're just over there right but right. i always are always related to, uh, you know, when we were kids playing tag, you know, or hide and seek, like you can hide anywhere right here in the yard, but the boundary is past that light pole and then past that ditch over there. Right. This is where we play out there. You're, you're outside the rules, bro. Like, sorry about it. You know what I mean? And if, yeah. you, can't, if you can't maintain that, then you probably shouldn't play with us, you know, type right. Um, yeah, it got, it got, it got super, it gets super weird. And, and I'm glad that you find it like I don't want to say finally because I know growth and and, and right living. like it won't stop. But <laughs> and and I post it a lot, and I think people think I'm going through like mental breakdowns and stuff. But I'm like, I always put um. Sometimes I have to reintroduce myself to myself, and uh -huh. you know, sometimes you got to do that mental fucking check in and just remind yourself like, yeah. hey, like these things getting attached to me. And that I'm allowing to affect my my motion and I'll let it to affect my mental, like, oh, that ain't me, bro. Like sometimes I gotta remind me who I am and right. and, and what I what I stand for with the boundaries and and understanding like my own personal limitations of of things I, I will and will not be a part of, 
you know. Um, right. It's good, and, though. That, that makes me happy to hear. Yeah. And like the, the thing with boundaries is I, I heard a great teaching once that was like, it's not that we when we think of boundaries, we think of this, like yeah. keeping people away, like, you know, like separation between you and I. And it's that to a degree, but it's not so much so on that negative end of the spectrum. It's more boundaries are my preferences. Mm -hmm. My boundaries are my preferences. I cannot mm -hmm. inflict those on anyone else. Mm -hmm. My boundaries are my preferences and the way I will move in the world. Like I like, um, I like cheesecake made out of cashews instead of cream cheese, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So like that, that's my boundary. That's my preference. So I'm not really going to go eat cream cheese cheesecake because it's not, I'm mm -hmm. not going to really feel good after. Right. Yeah. But if somebody's trying to force that cheesecake upon me that I don't want to eat, or if I'm trying to force my healthier cheesecake onto someone else, Neither mm -hmm. is the not neither serves yeah. either of us. But I can have my cream cheese cheese or my cashew cheesecake and you can have your cream cheese cheesecake and then it's like more for you and more for me and like w like we don't have to have a problem just because our cheesecakes have a different base. You know? Yes. Yeah. And so it I mean sounds, people it seems will create like a, a problem. Because I chose cashews and you chose cream cheese, you know. It's like it seems like a it seems like a what is the name of the diagram? Like a Venn diagram where you have the two circles. Yeah. Right. And so it's like this overlapping. You know, we can eat mm -hmm. cheesecake at the same table, bro. You know, like you right. might be vegetarian, I might be. You know, I might be carnivorous. So I'm not going to hate on for your food. You can hate on for mine. We can sit at this table. But all these other things are the things I enjoy. That's what you enjoy over there. But right here, we can still we still enjoy food. We might enjoy this, you know, particular restaurant or this particular setting. And you can have what you want. I can have what I want. And this is the boundary. Don't try to force all this stuff onto me. Right. I'm not going to try to force all this stuff onto you. Right. And, and that's the that's the mode in which I I think more people should try to operate in. You yeah. know, like you should really try to operate in this understanding of people are going to like what they like. They're going to like what they, they're going to not like what they don't like. And, you know, trying to force somebody to change that is, is not the move. It's just not. Because like, so like, let's look at that. Right. Because what that is, is a power dynamic. Right. Mm -hmm. And the truth, if we're going to look at the most logical perspective of this, mm -hmm. if, True power and true peace is being able to sit at the table where I eat my cheesecake my, the way I like and you eat your cheesecake the way you like. True mm -hmm. peace and power comes from I don't need you to be any other way to in order for me to be my most powerful self. Ooh, for, for me to be able to do what I need to do in the world, I don't need you to be any type of way. So mm -hmm. if I'm trying to force my cheesecake on you, I'm giving you my power. However, a lot of people think that they're exerting power. No, they're losing power. Mm -hmm. they, they think by trying to force and control and dominate that they're actually gaining something when really they're just losing. And since they were already powerful to begin with, it takes a while before they realize it. You know, that's like people who are like extremely rich who don't realize random money is getting gone. It's yeah. kind of like that, right? Yeah. And so you, you're giving all your power away to all these people until you become weak and you're like, no one's there for me when you're, you know, there's, there, then there's the pity party and the victim and all this when really you just doused out, you know, you get some power, you get some power because you're trying to, to force someone to eat cream cheese cheesecake. <laughs> yeah. I, I love how there's life lessons to be learned through the power of cheesecake people through the power Jesus. cheesecake saves lives it does i had some <laughs> i had some last night shout out to manny's in minneapolis minnesota 
Holy oh. smokes. It was crustless. So there was like no bottom to this thing. And it was it was it was to die for. Like I uh. They served as a 42 ounce steak. Um mm. And then, I mean, I was already dying off of that. But then the cheesecake came. I was like, I, I got to try this. Like, it was so <laughs> big. Like, one order of, of cheesecake serves the whole table. And so uh-huh. uh, we all we all dove in on it. But it was fucking immaculate. Wow. That's so wonderful. And and so one thing, too, I, w- I really want to talk. Because we've had, we've had some chit-chat on the good old facebook sphere, right? Uh-huh. Uh, about, you know watching because it's it's been a fun topic talking with the boys right and um because you know we're all on the bro bro wave right you know yep these women right and almost then, uh, mink town <laughs> <laughs> and then um i had i had one of my friends from from california her name was jasmine shout out jasmine uh, she came on the show and she kind of talked about you know how she feels femininity and masculinity fits in the world and uh i didn't like it (laughs) like you know i was like "Eh, this just doesn't sound right you know i agree with a lot of things she said and i i and i could um sympathize with a lot of things she said um but then once i got to talking with you i was like okay i think i'm just more accustomed to a southern woman's idea and a southern you know especially where we grew up we grew up in areas mm-hmm. where you know Bible Belt, we grew up in er- in an area where we're very culturally immersed, right? And not to say that Jasmine's not or any other people, aren't. sure. But I think I think I've really started leaning towards conversing with people and trying to un- understand people through the language and that they they speak, right? Right. And so I just think like somebody like you, you speak a language I understand. Like, yeah, I, I understand. I, I, cause I can kind of resonate not only with you as a person, cause we've known each other for a while, but it's like, you're the upbringing kind of what may have set the tone on some of the, these things. And then even to hear you say like, Oh, I've, I've kind of learned how to detach myself from certain things or turn into my power. So it, it's, it's interesting, right? So I'm I'm very interested to hear some of this stuff, but oh, I can't oh. wait. <laughs> Point. So let's let's start here, right? What do you think is a what do you think is a prevalent issue that you see between men and women when it comes to like our masculine and feminine energies? I think that people have gotten so hell bent on like they don't realize we're two sides of the same coin at all and on all topics on all issues there's always a polarity and so the polarity that's happening is men don't realize how much sameness that women have with them and women don't realize how much difference there is. Mm-hmm. Men are hell bent on, on focusing on how different we are, that we're not, uh, that we're not the same and women are hell bent on trying to prove that we're equal. Mm-hmm. And I think that these words have not been exclusively defined. Mm-hmm. And so I think people are talking around each other. They're saying a lot of the same things. They have a lot of the same issues. And really, um, there are minor adjustments that can be made on both sides that could send shock waves Mm -hmm. across the planet um so yeah so so it's this it's this communication about proving how different we are or proving how equal we are it's that Mm -hmm. that it's that right there is 
to me what I see pinpointed and like like people are like missing humanity. Like they're missing that the the, the very things that they're complaining about or um or trying to discuss that it also exists on the other side. It it just like looks like a teeny bit different, but the principalities are the same. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, on that effect, I think, and this is in no, I mean, I am no fucking scholar on any of this, <laughs> but I think it's absolutely, I think it's absolutely disrespectful for women to, to have this argument that, oh, we're equal to men. I think it's disrespectful to women itself. Because in no shape or form would I ever think that I equate my physical strength or job position to being superior to a woman, you know, like, and because there's so many things that women can do that we just fucking can't. Again, like, <laughs> I'm I'm not going to get into this whole like, oh, well, you know, what is a, like, you know, the, those type of conversations. I don't give a fuck about none of that. A woman, to, uh, you know, okay, so a woman, you know, they, men like to say like, oh, you know, we build the roads and we build the bridges and we build this and, you know, we create the society. It's like, you know, that's great. But the, but without, without our women, bro, like they line the schools, right? They birth our children, not us men, right? And we can build all these houses that we fucking want. And you go into any dude's house, they got a couch, a TV, and a fucking bag of popcorn. Like, yeah. we're okay. We're okay with that. We're simple beings, right? But you you want a home that's decorated and littered with y'all's memories and children and their little feet fucking tapping on the floor yeah. running around playing? You need women, bro. Like, this is – so to think that we can equate, you know, our, some kind of standing in life – by that to for 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 women to just to, to argue those small points it's like looking like trying to look into a house through a keyhole thinking that you are getting this whole picture of what's really going on here you know and and the idea i i really like that idea though we are we are two different we are two different sides of the same coin you know and i think yeah, I think a big problem is that we're losing sight of that. You know, we're losing yeah. sight of, of, you know, first off, we're humanity, right? And that's that's the coin, right? The species that we're here on Earth. And, and you need both parts, separate but equal at the same time. A quarter is still a quarter, right? It's 25 right. cents, whether it goes in heads or tails first, my boy. So That's right. Uh. So... I am so glad <laughs> that you started off this way because um, I can tell you that most women have zero idea of the value that they actually hold because okay. I know for myself, and I've been doing self-work for my God <laughs> over a decade, so um, I have, been, uh, up until, I, I can tell you, up until the Fresh and Fit podcast, I've never heard the phrase, um, a woman is born with her value, a man has to earn his value. Mm -hmm. Because it, what I can say is at least where we grow, grew up and, and in many cultures, it's the, it's the the guys who do have the value you know the the and, and but the thing is is if you really look at it it's not for good reasons right mm -hmm. it's it's either moms who aren't and and i can oh i can get into the relationships and how the 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 solution to all relationship problems is making sure that your woman is fucked proper. I'm just putting that out there. I'm giving <laughs> yeah. you the solution. I've got all the layers and all the understanding, but that's the answer. The, the, the sol solving the family issues, solving the relationship issues, it all starts with making sure 
all her sexual needs are taken care of. And then she cooks and cleans the joy, sheer mm-hmm. joy. Okay, so that's the answer to that. Sorry, side name. Um, oh, God, what was I talking about, Punch? <laughs> the value get, men are, us in our culture men are born right right <laughs> sorry i had to give the solution so we were always taught you know do you know the 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 guys are stronger they can open up the cans they can um you know uh help on the farm they can or it's a unhealthy mother who isn't having the proper relationship with the father that she needs to. She, so she creates the surrogate, son, the surrogate husband through her son. And so mm-hmm. then that creates all kinds of issues when it comes to the relationship and then the woman that he actually wants and, and is, wants mm-hmm. to marry. That's the very woman she tends to push away. Right. Because then she, you know, so the, the, I, it's always been the, the men are valued at a much, like a, a way greater degree. Like, mm-hmm. as, like women are just burdens. Female babies are killed. Like, you know, like stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, not here, but in other cultures. Mm-hmm. So up until then, up until these conversations, I've never heard this. So if I've never heard this, I can guarantee you there's so many women out there who have never experienced this sentence, this this thought process. So a huge percentage of women are going, like you're facing that right there alone Mm -hmm. of not understanding the value that they have of offering perspective, the being a portal of life, um, understanding what beauty is to men because women don't the only way I ever understood how important beauty was to men was watching the show Dirty Jobs and realizing mm-hmm. kind of what like a man's kind of day is like especially if he's out here in these um, in these dirty dirtier jobs there's no beauty in his life and to see a woman's body, to be in a woman's embrace, it's the most glorious thing. And mm-hmm. so there has to be some kind of separation because um, it's confusing to women about a man, it, the way he really bonds is through like sex and pleasure like that. But then all, so he can either be extremely constructive and healing and um and create order in his house through proper sex, or he can be extremely destructive through sex. Mm -hmm. And right Mm -hmm. now, so many men are choosing the destructive path because they've been hurt. They've been brutalized. They've been through a lot of shit because women are evil bitches at times. And I mean, they are, (laughs) there ain't no doubt about it. There ain't no doubt about it, Pudge. I I fully 100% honor that there is this huge section of women. I'm going to tell you this. I've realized, because at the end of the day, men have to realize the power that they do have to lead the way. Whatever men Mm -hmm. want, women will become. Mm -hmm. Right? So men have to look at what they're investing in. Absolutely. They're investing in OnlyFans. They're investing in porn. They're investing in sexual deviance. Mm-hmm. You know, they're investing in making sure to stay with people who will never acknowledge their true authentic self. But then when they find someone who, who will acknowledge them, they make sure to stay away. Mm-hmm. Because they're too scared to be that vulnerable. They w- won't have control or they, they've they been hurt by a woman and women hurt in vicious ways and they never oh, yeah. stopped and, and healed. And, you know, so. So there, there's. The conversations that we were having here in Podunk Town, North Carolina. 15, 20 years ago about guys, we're having those same conversations online right now about women. 
yeah. the exact same conversations, the exact same details, the exact same mm -hmm. descriptions. Mm -hmm. So women are following suit because those men are the ones who are out in the public that are meeting the women who are out and who are out trying to find men. Mm -hmm. and, and I think and, it's, it's, it's a weird, um, it's a weird, it's a, like, I've listened to the Fresh and Fit a few times, and, because, you know, I'll see clips and stuff, and so I was like, let me see what they got going on. Mm -hmm. And um, there's always a lot of good points. There's, a, I try to take something out of all of it. <clears throat> and there's the a lot weird, of truths in it. There's a very, a lot, a lot. And, you know, delivery on how they're saying these things, people can argue that, but if you strip all that back, there's some real messages being said. And one thing I've gathered through all this right is is and you kind of touched on it a little bit is is like there's this swing of the pendulum it goes back and forth back and forth and you know until we find balance and always always and i think always i think the easiest way for for me at least that i've been able to understand these things is is just because they you know there, there's this whole thing of um you know men don't want women who do this you know, or, oh, and then the retort will be, well, men have been doing that. And it's like, well, it doesn't make it right, though, right? Like, we're, I don't ever want to be excused for the promiscuousness of other men, you know what I mean? And, I like, no, I am not a player if I sleep with a bunch of women. I am not a pimp. I am not – I'm a hoe. I'm a hoe, bro. <laughs> I'm a hoe, bro. You're a hoe, bro. You're a, you're a hoe, bro. And so for, and so like going back, so for women to think to, to gain equality and power by saying, well, I'm going to sleep with as many men as I want to, or, and, or I'm going to date all these people or play all these people because that's what men do. It's like, honey, don't do that. Don't do that because you're losing your power by trying to act like something that you're not. Like you are a woman and a man bro that is not how us men should behave like we're supposed to be proper men bro proper men in improper times that is that to me is a definition of a man mm -hmm. you know and like a true man's power is being civil during uncivil times being just during unjust times being honorable noble being during a man of character God damn right. Stand stand on something, bro. St right? Stand on and for something, you know? And like you said, women will follow suit. You know what I mean? And just like me, if I can look at a woman, you know, if, I, if I'm interested in this girl and she's in the gym and she's doing this and she's doing that, you know, these things that I also align with, it's going to cause me to dive deeper into what I'm aligning with, right? The podcasting, the gym, the dancing, the fucking this X, Y, and Z. We follow suit by the examples that we set to each other. Honestly, like, you know what I mean? So you brought up a point that I, I think it, we need to delve into of this is another two sides of the same coin. Um, I think men don't realize how high of sex drives women have. They don't realize it till they're in a relationship with them for a long time. You mm -hmm. listen to an older man. I saw a, a short one time that was asking an older man, um, you know, what, what do you wish someone would have told you about marriage as you, you know, went on? And he said, I wish someone would have told me that as we got older, she would have been wanting more sex than I would have ever wanted. Absolutely. And so that's something that we don't talk about in society. Women are supposed to be, um, late, uh, lady in the streets, the Virgin Mary, you know, mm -hmm. like th that, that's like the expectation. Right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and, and, but men don't have that same expectation held upon them. They think they're supposed to go sow their seed they think that because they have this instinct, um, you know, that, that they're supposed to act upon it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, but they don't realize we have that same instinct. That's just something in the way that emotions have been suppressed in you guys through mm -hmm. society, sexual, the, the, the um, admittance 
and exploration of sexual desire for a woman mm -hmm. or for, for said woman, uh, the collective woman has been suppressed and we're not mm -hmm. allowed to share that part of us. However, mm -hmm. there is a sexual wild woman in every single woman. Y'all pursue sex, but we are sex. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Right? And so, Absolutely. like, women don't realize, and I've only seen up in the, uh, the queen maker, I've seen where she's finally been able to explain in a way that makes sense to women. Because a lot of the time, also, men don't understand that their logic they don't understand women and their logic and so they think that women say one thing will do another and that means that they don't know what they want but no there is the societal pressure to be you know the girl next door and you know miss susie q or whatever but when in reality there are all these other hormones and emotions like y'all y'all's hormones go crazy y'all got one testosterone yeah. <laughs> right it's your main one and it's a 24-hour cycle right reset every single day we got so many and mm -hmm. we are not the same person week to week mm -hmm. month to month we are not the same person mm -hmm. and so that's why you guys are supposed to provide and protect for us because we're supposed to, we are experiencing these emotional waves and going through all the, to, to be a woman is to be in pain, is to mm -hmm. experience pain. Childbirth is the closest to death that you get, you know, mm -hmm. so that's the value that women hold, the value to bring life into this world, whether she chooses to or not, the value of the female body, that mm -hmm. in itself is a trophy. That's mm -hmm. why women are the prize because men are not the prize. They're not, they're the champion. Oof. Yeah. They're yeah. the champions. Know your place. You mm -hmm. get to win this, right? Mm -hmm. And and so that's why women are women have to understand not to make it easy, not because we can't make it easy and it would be all great and fine and dandy, but y'all can't handle easy. <laughs> y'all, y'all got to go through this. I, I'm jokingly calling it like a trauma response, but it's like, you got to go and, you know, uh, climb the mountain and fight the dragon and get the woman to let down her hair and climb up the tower and finally pull down the, pull away the crowbars and get the damsel in distress. Mm -hmm. And that's so honorable and innocent and wonderful. But also that means I now have to be the damsel in distress. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be. I don't want to be in distress. And so we would like to make it easier for y'all. How, I mean, how, how many women, how many, can I cuss on here? Absolutely. How many bitches don't you see giving it up to motherfuckers out here as poor as poor as shit? Too getting many. pregnant. <laughs> getting Too pregnant many. all over. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so so all this that the Fresh and Fit podcast is saying about, you know, women don't fare out better in divorce. Women don't fare out better in child support. I mean, if you're talking about a man who's making millions and millions of dollars and she's getting hundreds of thousands you know like that that's just percentages and stuff and i'm not and i'm not saying it takes all that to raise a child but why does any why should anyone have to get the bare minimum of raising a child mm -hmm. and why is it not okay that women can spend their own money you know on their own care which makes sure that the child is properly taken care of because we do have all these emotional waves that we have to go through and we still have to show up day by day in and out that's mm -hmm. our value we show up even though all this inside is straight rage that's mm -hmm. how that's what every woman is experiencing and mm -hmm. so women want sex mm -hmm. period and they're not sluts for wanting sex because guess what? When they're married, they're like, what did the husband want? He wants her to want sex. 
Mm-hmm. So that that doesn't happen just because oh we've you know signed the document and now pussy wet you know yeah it don't it don't yeah. work like that you know <laughs> and I think I think too and you know going to like a biological sense is is I had to kind of start understanding it the more I got older was is um and because I had somebody say it to me was is like oh her her biological clock is just different bro i was like what do you mean because i was like you know talking with this guy and he's like yeah man my, my my wife wants to have sex all the time and sometimes i just be tired like bro just what's the problem he's like well her biological clock is different than mine and so i had to come to this understanding that yeah women go through a monthly cycle of where their body is screaming to them, child, sex. Let's get this going, bro. Let's, what's the, pro, what's the fucking hold up, right? And we're men, we have this in us daily. And from puberty, you know, we're having millions of these same little fucking little cells in us just swirling around. So from, you know, a 15-year-old Pudge couldn't fucking control himself. And you wonder why at 15 to like 20, we want to fucking fuck and we want to fight and we want to just be crazy because it's learning. We're wanting, we're, we're slowly learning how to deal with this, with this buildup inside of us. And it's a really weird way to put it. And, but women deal with it, you know, not only on a daily basis, because there's desire, you know, we live, we live with desire inside of us. But then there's also these moments of hyper, just hyper expressive, hyper desire, like, because the body is, the body's kicking it into, yeah, it's kicking it into a gear, right? And so sexual desire in women, yeah, it's, I don't know why it's been shamed, right? Or the desire to explore these things. But like you said, I, for men and women, because we're both the same part of the same. I'll point, tell you I think. why. Why is that? Me, it, it, and I have a couple of opinions about this. Um, paternity security. Mm, I've never heard that one. It's where it, it, it's the concept of you know, evolutionarily before DNA tests and all, um, you know, there was the only way to secure that this was a man's child was the woman was only having sex with that man. That was the way to prove it. Mm. Interesting. So think about that being psychologically Think mm. about that being the precedent of what men have, like, this is set in stone. Like, this is the way, like, be- because, and, but it all started with being less nomadic and, and being more agricultural because then it's land rights. It's, um, you know, I'm passing this down to my family and I ain't passing all 40 acres of my land to somebody else's child who ain't going to, you know, right. So sexuality, and this, this, like this blew my mind, sexuality and security have been hand in hand, but Mm. that's only secure. That part is only security for men. The Mm. the women know who the child is for, you know, we, we Mm. know we were there. Right. And the child is obviously ours. But if you think about it in more tribal societies, like more African tribal societies, it was like way, way back. It was more, um, uh, women were more communal and um, men, the the strongest, the fittest, the the best looking, whatever, the whatever, because women are having, women have the responsibility and the duty of choosing the genes that get passed on moving forward. Absolutely. That's the value that they need to understand, the power, the responsibility. That's the duty that they need to understand that they need to have and that their body is access to that. They don't understand that. (laughs) They think that 
oh, I'm just not supposed to open my legs for Johnny Q over there. Mm -hmm. You know, so. I I've been thinking, you know, you know, we like to talk about chastity belts for women. I think we need more castration in men. You know, I think we need more, uh, what is it, vasectomies. Or at least vasectomies, right? Vasect for sure. I mean, listen, if a dude Like, why couldn't we use vasectomies as, as like, a punishment? I mean, we Absolutely. death is a punishment. Why can't we do vasectomies or castration? You know why? Because men are in charge and they don't, they're doing crimes at the top and they don't want the, that to be the punishment. That's you got why. my vote. You got my fucking vote. Because <laughs> let's just be real. Let's just be let's fucking real Call here. a spade a spade. Let's, let's call a spade a fucking spade. And there's, you know, I'm not even going to like, yes, there's women who were not, you know, they're just not cut to be mothers. And that's okay. Right. That's, that's, that's okay. Motherhood is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. But there is definitely men not cut out for fatherhood and should not be sewing their seed because down to their genetic fucking code, yeah. down to your DNA, my boy, you should not yeah. be spreading it. Now, your child might be the one out of the kajillion that live inside of you that could solve cancer. I am your not child down might be the black sheep, but do I want to count know, on that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not betting my fucking house on that. I'm not betting the inheritance of this world, right? The the children that I will have and have, like I will not bank their society on the idea that Johnny Two Shoes, who ain't had a job, who don't give a fuck, who just sits around and smokes weed all day, who's doing coke and all this other shit. Right. I just, I, I, you feel that you should repopulate the earth? No, my guy. No, my guy, not um, no fucking way. And think, thinking that a woman should submit to him when all they can do is, I don't know, play a video game. And video games are fine in general when you're trying to, you know, just chill and zonk out. But if that's your life and it ain't bringing in money and you're not also staying fit and, you know, using some kind of leadership skills, then... Why should a woman submit to you? Why do you feel like you deserve that? Why do you feel like you deserve the glory of a woman? That is a that is an interesting point. That is something I've discussed with with some of my buddies. Is is I've heard that more. Is is deserve my submission, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. What makes you feel though that you deserve my masculinity? What makes you feel though that I should help lead you? through this course of life, right? And I've heard the thing of, oh, well, the proper man will make me submit. And for the guys, right, I've told them, so if, she's, if she's not submitting to you, right, there's two things going on. You're not the man, first off, she might not just be that one for you, bro. There's something else that she's searching for. Two, if she's looking at you and she's saying, baby, you are this one for me, but you're not doing, you're not doing X, Y, and Z. And this is what I need from you. Now, I know that might not be communicated that way. Right. Right. That's something that you guys got to work on as a fucking relationship, your communication yeah, right. styles, speaking in a language that we understand, right. Learning how to speak to your man and speak to your woman to get the answers you need. But you may also need to elevate who you are as a person. Right. And be weary in that elevation because in that elevation you may you may realize that this isn't the person for me right you might get to a point in your life your career physically mentally where you look at this look at this person and say you know what i don't want your submission right and i and same thing of the same coin i think people need to look at each other and instead of looking at a deadbeat and say oh well earn my submission baby girl you need to just realize he's a fucking bum he's a bum and you're kicking a fucking bum yo guys look at her if she's not giving you the submission that you desire she just might not be the fucking one for you maybe she got some daddy trauma going on maybe you're not in the place where you need to be bro like Go work on your fucking self, dude. Like, yeah. stop thinking that y'all got to be in these fucking half-assed relationships to fulfill some unmet goddamn need, bro. Right. For real. For real. 
So here's here's my perspective on that whole conversation. First of all, husbands get submission, not boyfriends. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, yes. I want to go ahead and create that standard that we are not within this <laughs> conversation. I am not talking about boyfriends. Boyfriends Positive. do not get submission. They mm. get the road to be paved the way to be easier to my submission. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second of all, your masculinity is supposed to exist regardless of any woman. Mm -hmm. Your masculinity is you standing in your purpose, you living out your, um, your dreams. The height of the experience of this reality is to be the best man you can be. Mm -hmm. That's regardless of a woman, mm -hmm. right? So your masculinity exists and is needed for the world. You're supposed mm -hmm. to be here to protect and provide for the world. You're supposed mm -hmm. to be at, as the height of a man's experience. You are supposed you understand the depths of the darkness of the man's experience. And so you are supposed to be protecting the weak, like just like any wolf pack, the leaders are in the front, but you also got a leader in the back and yep. all the people are right in the middle because you know trailing behind you is the danger. So if you know the depths of the man experience and, and the destruction that men are capable of, and they're only because you're only able to go as high as you are able to go low. So to, to the height of this experience is to be a man and the, the, the darkest darkness of this experience is to be a man and that destructive quality of men. Mm -hmm. So women, because we are physically weaker and understand we are only physically weaker because of evolution. We lose so much blood. Think about if you lost so much blood every single month, 12 times yeah. a month, you were bleeding for five days. You lose cough. <clears throat> that are needed to, to exist and be a functional body. We are losing that every single month. So yes, and that, and it's what's necessary to create life, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So imagine if we had a leg up of all of existence to, to not have menstruation yeah. and to not lose liters of blood every month, we would be way stronger. However, That's why I think it's crazy for women to think on any level that you guys are like, why would you want to be first off equal to us? But what makes you think that you're equal to us with honey? You, you go through a cycle every month where me, if I lost that much blood with the thin blood I have now, I'd be dead. I'd well, be fucking dead. <laughs> the whole process is not respected. You know, <laughs> women are forced to still go to work. We're forced mm -hmm. to still hold to the same standards. Mm -hmm. We're forced to still show up. Period days are no excuse for anything. We can't even have an attitude. Mm -hmm. so, if, so if you are able to understand how destructive a man is and the physical strength that they can take over women, then you protect all women from that. Because mm -hmm. no woman, no matter how much of a hoe she's being, deserves that. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why your masculinity exists, mm -hmm. at, regardless of my femininity. But guess what? That's what the energy of masculinity does. So what mm -hmm. do women do? Women like feel so unsafe in the world. So unsafe that they don't even realize how unsafe they are. Or how unsafe they feel. Not necessarily that they are, but how unsafe that they feel. Mm -hmm. We know at any point in time that you guys can take us over. At, so the only um, retort, the only battle move 
that we have is our words that cut you. You know, there's nothing else. So, you know, if if you're going to like play the game, right, and you're going to and you have an agenda or you have, you know, whether it be good or bad, if that woman wants to participate or not, she'll be very, she'll be clear about it. Like, so if she's like rejecting you in a very um, crass way, right. And really rude and loud and obnoxious. And it's because she doesn't want you to come back. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the only way we can kind of guarantee you won't come back or else you think it's like, Oh no, like, no. You in Mm -hmm. case she's being coy, she's playing hard to get, let me pursue more. Right. And that's what the darkest of you think as well. Yes. And so if we're, if, if, but yet if we're alone and it's just the two of us, I can only be this way in a group where I have safety, right? Mm -hmm. Which is that masculine, more fierce part of me that exists. I have to show that to you to make it clear that I don't want you and I don't want you to pursue me. And that's all I do, right? Mm -hmm. But then you have men who get so upset by the no, that even though, you know, the no exists, the woman's right. Like if she doesn't want you, she's right. So you, Mm -hmm. you move on, right? But instead the, 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 the worst part of the male nature is now revenge sex in Mm -hmm. various ways, right? Mm -hmm. It's, 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 uh, finally like pursuing so much and breaking your walls down with the whole agenda for a lot, playing the long game of just ruining you as a person, Mm -hmm. all because of, I did not want to date or fuck you. And Mm -hmm. I said, no, in a rude way. Mm -hmm. That's the, The, to me, I think it's the worst. Don't like that math ain't mathing, you know? that's the worst. I, I cannot stand that. And I've came across a lot of guys who's like, Oh, she turned me down. She's a, you know, this, this, that, and the third. I'm like, bro, just keep it yeah. fucking pushing. Like, Oh, hold on. Put before I forget, uh, if I don't tell you now, I'm gonna forget. The reason that the femininity can only exist once the masculinity is present is because the the masculine creates a container of safety for the feminine energy. So if mm-hmm. there is no masculine energy outside of us creating that container of safety for the feminine energy, for us to be soft and kind and gentle and wonderful and delightful. Ooh, Kayla, you froze, boo. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no, she froze. No. Hold on, let's see if she comes back. Yo, this is such a good conversation. Kayla, I think I may have lost you, babe. I did. This was, this has been such a good conversation. Whoever is still watching, right? Cause I know I got, I know I got some people on Twitch and if you're in and if you're watching, chime in, yo, this has been a fucking crazy convo, crazy, crazy convo. I'm going to message Kayla here on Facebook real quick. So please don't mind me. Uh, Yo, crazy. And I hope you guys enjoy it, fam, because this is the type of conversations that we need. Uh, But this is, this is, I think, the type of conversations more healthy, right? Not to knock Fresh and Fit or the whatever podcast or whatever podcast be talking about this type of stuff. Um, This is, these are the type of convos that we need, right? I, I do enjoy their conversations right and i like to always hear different perspectives but 
you can, I think that there's just better ways, right? These calm and collected conversations and finding points in which you can, you can agree on. Um, hold on, give me one second. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to try to get her to log back in through the link. Um, but these are the type of conversations that are not only fucking healthy, right? But, oh, there she is. My girl. I'm so sorry. My internet got kicked off somehow. So then I had to switch phones. It's it's cool. Listen, I be fucking doing this podcast off of hotel Wi-Fi and it kills me because <laughs> I pay for I pay for like top line Wi-Fi at the house. And so I'm like, God, fucking damn it. Like it just fucking kills right? me. But um, uh, what was I saying? So, oh, OK, I know where I was at. So until, if there is no masculine outside of that, and usually, or, or in the standard family, there should be fathers and brothers to help create this, um, mm -hmm. and cousins and, and family and stuff like that to create that. So that way, you know, it's not just one person creating it all for another person. But mm -hmm. um, with, with, you know, the way that in what I consider a government agenda that's out to, you know, break up the family, you know, men are being taken out of the homes. Like I never, I never lived with a man in the home. Never. So, um, you know, we then have to create that fortress of safety for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so then that's where the phrase of, I don't need a man comes from. Because it's it's like I've now created my own safety. And so to let you into my fortress, I need to know that you're not going to come in here and be destructive. Yeah. And men resent that. And it's it's like would would you would you rather me be like not functional without you that you never existed before I just met you on Tinder today? <laughs> am i not oh, supposed no. to be able to pay my bill oh, am i not no. supposed to be able to make sure i got a car to go to work oh no why is it uh, not okay for me to function in society up until you get here yeah and see like there there is there is definitely a government agenda to break up the nucleus family but I and and I will I will die on that fucking hill, and yeah. I, and to be a functional part of society, right? It looks different now than it did 200, 300 years ago, right? Well, and, you also have to understand we are a dysfunctional society, so a lot of our issues are trying to be functional in a dysfunctional society. Most relationships are dysfunctional. Most families are dysfunctional. If you are running functionally, you are not the norm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, whoa, bro. Like you live with both of your parents. Like they've been together how long? Like that is right? not, that is not something that should be just so fucking celebrated. Like, yeah, it should be celebrated. Should absolutely. fucking lutely but it shouldn't be such an outlier. It shouldn't be such a graph. surprise. Yeah. <laughs> such yeah. a oh shock. And I really like that. I really like that wolf pack analogy you made uh, because I, I had read that before. And I had also learned too, that when a member of the pack is lost, um, the, the female wolves will go into estrus and they immediately begin to replenish the pack. Um, and so to me, that is, that is a beautiful way to look at how we work in this like, and, and, and just in this collaboration of, hey, like, yo, we lost a part of our pack. You know what I mean? I'm up here in the front. I'm up here in the back. So it may have been us, one of the two. So that position of protection needs to be replenished. And these, this pa these pack of animals know, like, hey, we need to start behaving in a certain way so that us as a collective can continue to survive. Like, it can continue to flourish and can continue to go on. You know, right. and, um, I'm definitely a back of the pack wolf. Um, I had a buddy ask me one time because I was walking in the back. We were walking to the bar and, you know, there's fucking like 10 of us walking mm -hmm. and I'm all the way in the back and I'm just, you know, just doing my thing. And he walked up. He's like, hey, man, you OK? I was like, yeah, yeah, bro, I'm straight. 
He's like, well, why are you back here? I was like, so I can have your guys' back, man. He's like, oh, that's that's cool as hell. I was like, yeah, bro. I was like, somebody's got to bring up the six. Because he's, right? you know, he's, he, he's in the military. So I was like, somebody's got to bring up the six, man. He's like, oh, well, I'll walk back here with you. So like, okay. And whether you're a front of the pack man or you're a back of the pack man, I don't think either one should be shamed, right? It's it's okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm an alpha man. Like, okay, bro, that's you, dog. Like, that's you, you know? And I think in between that, when we have our women, I think for the safety of women, right? And for the safety of relationships, understand what type of man you're fucking dealing with. Is he a front of the pack type wolf, right? Because then normally, naturally, you're going to have to be submissive. Naturally, you're going to have to be a little more soft around him, right? Or... You're going to have to stand back. Let him as, do the, the, the language for women is you're going to have to stand back. That that's that's all it is. Women can understand that versus you're going to have to be softer for him, sweetie. You know we don't get that. Yeah. We don't get that We're as much as the pack. <laughs> we 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 let him stand back. So because from a from a woman's perspective, right? The, the way that this conversation act like like the subconscious like patterns play out. So let's say CJ, stop. I'm sorry. He's protecting the pack. He's protecting he the is. Pack. But right, we we spoke it up, right? So come here. So um when it comes to let's say uh, had, what is the name of that show? I can't remember. Have you? Okay. Imagine we're the only people in the jungle, right? I'll, I'll see you later. Imagine we're the only people in the jungle and it's just you and me. We both know how to fight, right? Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen naturally is you are going to lead the way because you are going to take on that imminent danger that may be in front of us. But guess mm -hmm. what the woman's role is? To have your six. Mm -hmm. I'm looking back here. I'm making sure because if you go and you got to deal with the bear or the lion or the, the obstacle in front of us, I now have to watch the entire perimeter to make sure you are safe while mm -hmm. this is happening. So, but also if there's any other dangers coming, although you led the way, I still got to fight the dangers too, which is yeah. why men need to understand that it's not the most advantageous path to keep their women just soft and gentle and beautiful and supple and sensual and, and sexual fantasy and desire and all of that. That's very idealistic. Mm -hmm. Men get to love in a very idealistic way. Whereas mm -hmm. like women have to love in a very realistic way. That's why we have to have so many requirements and so many things that that have to show up and be present because if you are not stable you are now a liability absolutely and i don't feel like taking on a liability you're not a child We're and that's why asset. wives are not mothers you know wives are not your mothers wives no. are the mother to your children yes that's and, why and you know and I and I've and I've I've spoke to this in length where it's like the strongest thing I think I've ever experienced with a woman was, you know, my you know, my son's mom. And she would speak in length of, to me like it's okay, babe. Like, come on, get up, like get up now. Like, you know, um, I remember the I remember the night or the day we found out Pop had passed. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you get through this, it, it happened in the morning, you you get through everything and then I remember that night going to sleep and I remember it was like such a mind boggling idea to like go to bed now. Cause you know, there's the routine of, all right, pop, I'm going to bed. Love you. You know? And I just remember I was down on the ground. I was crying like in front of his couch and she goes, get up, like get up now. Like get, come on, we're going to bed. And I'm just over here crying. Like, so in the moments when us men fall, right. The strongest and most softest thing, to me, like, and I think I'm, that may be a really bad word to use, but it's like the softest thing that you can do, but strongest thing that you could do for me is get me the fuck up. Like, yeah, get me up, get me back in line, get me back in line, dude, and say, you got a job to do. Like, come on, 
let's roll, you know, and, and those aren't the things that take on when a guy's just, you know, that's a very peculiar situation, right? But you have men who falter and fall to so many different things. And to me, that's just not a strong man. Like you said, that's a fucking liability. You know what I mean? That's liability. A, that's a dude who ain't standing on, standing on his square and being strong when he's really when it's supposed to. You know what I mean? And I, but, and I'm not saying that guys can't have their moments in, in this and that, but you kind of kind of pick and choose when you're when you're deciding to fall out of line, man. Well, here I I, I think I I've been able to think up a kind of safety guide or like parameters around when men are emotionally vulnerable and what needs to happen at that time for both parties. Mm -hmm. So there are those extenuating circumstances where you have, um, where, where you have death, you have loss, you have grief, you have this, the spiritual awakening, you have where you're broken apart and putting yourself back together again. Right. You're, you are absolutely 100% allowed those moments. And in those moments, yes, your, your woman or your wife or whatever will look at you differently. That is not, but here it's all about interpretation. Like you said earlier, right? It's all about perspective and it's 111 on the clock right now. It's actually 111, 11. So I know I'm right. So, um, it's your, your, Women understand, and I'm talking about good women, not the 22-year-old OnlyFans girls who haven't had to experience emotional maturity yet. They themselves are not emotionally mature. So an emotionally mature woman is going to understand where you are at, where the emotional vulnerability that you have. And just like you are that, that rock when, the, when her emotional waves are hitting you, she is now your rock, but she is not getting you in line, like whipping you into shape. But what I think the word you are trying to look for is the strongest thing that she can do for you in that moment is be soft. Because mm -hmm. as you're going through the emotional whirlwind, no matter what, you're you your love for her or you're like that attachment to her she's that secure she's the thing that you know to be clear in in the 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 world of chaos she comes to you in that moment and she gets right in your face she gets extremely she makes you get present with her mm -hmm. because she understands that's what's necessary mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. and she only understands it because she's had to experience it, right? So she mm -hmm. comes to you with the strength that that you need to just get you off of the off of the floor and mm -hmm. get you to bed and get you in that woman's embrace because there is no safer place than a woman's bosom. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. And then. The strong, that's where the strongest thing she can do for you is be soft. So mm -hmm. that way you've got that soft place to land. So that way, by the time you are able to, you, when, then you're able to actually cry it out and understand the benefit of relief that comes from crying. And then mm -hmm. you get that part out and, and both of you understand this is a part of the process. This is a part of the journey. This is not weakness. This is strength. Mm -hmm. And then you're able to probably make love that night, go to sleep, wake up in the morning, completely renewed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Again, the, the huge part of the world's problems is being able to like making sure sex is properly handled. Huge absolutely. Part. I keep bringing it back down to this. I swear to God, yeah, that and healthy uh, desserts are the solution. <laughs> <laughs> uh, always, you know, I always attribute moments like that, right, where it's like, you know, you you see these movies or cartoons of somebody getting sucked up into a tornado, and the one thing that this character could possibly hold on to is such a weird object right it's the it's the towel rack in the bathroom or it's the fucking side of the desk that somehow is still holding on <laughs> right 
and so you know for us men it's it may it may seem just like such an inanimate object when you really break it down philosophically it's like this one object this thing that should have been torn to pieces too this is what you're holding on to and this is the thing that you're holding on to for fucking dear life quite frankly and that to me is like okay people something that can make me feel like that someone that can make me feel like that in those moments of utter disaster that is what you need to find that is for mm-hmm. us men at least you know what i mean and whew, yeah front it like def definitely i think that the more we go down the the more we can go down the rabbit hole of of relationships and and gender roles and you know masculine and feminine energies i think i think people really need to understand and again i don't want to bang on you know the whatever podcast or fresh and fit whatever because they're all saying the same thing different ways and Mm -hmm. i i i think that we just need to understand what our roles are right because there are roles in the society i don't give birth you know like I don't, I, I don't care what nobody in this fucking world says. I'll never give birth. Like, that's just not You'll never have a period. I'll never. I don't care what, I don't care what you stick in my arm, dude. I'm a man. And and that's just, that's just what it is. Okay. Sorry about it. Argue with your mother. And women are, are women. And they hold a very special fucking place. Like, to think like, you know. You know, for for a lot of native tribes, they're not. You know, women aren't supposed to perform in ceremony during certain part. You know, during their their cycles and this and that. And it's like you say that to someone, and it's like, oh well, that's oppressive to women. It's like, well, actually, they're no, so they're way powerful. too powerful. <laughs> they're so powerful. They're so powerful right now that this they like, absolutely affect the energy of everything of the ceremony of this. This ceremony is supposed to be being brought with certain energy. And, you know, I'm in. Because, you know, and I, because right, the reason why it's respectful is masculine energy directs energy. Yeah. That's <laughs> why it's in alignment with, with, all, with creation and all that is. It's not an oppression. It's women are the energy. And so if they're uh, on that time, it's too much power for the man to be able to direct and control. He, there is no container for you at that time. You are the portal between heaven and earth, life itself. That is what women don't know, yet men understand. And, you know, and recently, you know, recently I've been reading the Bible, which has been much to my surprise. Same! To my surprise as well. (laughs) Much to my surprise. And, uh, you know, I was reading through Genesis and, you know, I, I wanted to read, I, I definitely wanted to read Adam, Eve, that creation, biting the apple, all this. And something that I took from it was, was, you know, my, my big question was, was, okay, first off, Eve bit the apple. I get it. Right. So not only was she able to taste the fruit of knowledge first, right? So men mm-hmm. who we think mm. are so fucking wise, you think you're so fucking wise, my G. Though you may have been created first, she bit into knowledge first, okay? Then, right, it was us who wanted to who wanted to pursue the tree in the fruits of everlasting life. So you were about to take a bad thing and make it fucking permanent, my guy. Got to be careful with our actions, okay? And why was Adam punished along with Eve, right? I was fed this apple, but it's like, bro, you were supposed to make sure that your companion here stayed with you, stayed away from these things, right? Yeah, we help direct. There is direction there and also companionship saying, hey, baby, don't, don't do that. Why are we doing this? Don't, don't do that. Like, you know, right. like, like, don't, don't Smack do it that. Like, you know? Smack it out of hand. Smack it. You know, and so. I, I love when guys are like, well, you know, you bit the apple first. It's like, well, dumbass, we let her. Like, uh, god damn, like, respect, right. what she's going, respect what she's going through, bro. Respect these fucking times. And so. Well, but, but think about it, Pudge. First of all, God did not, in the, in, in the scripture, God did not give Eve the directive. He gave the directive to Adam. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. 
So Eve is supposed to, right, like submit and follow his leadership, right? Mm -hmm. However, when it was time for Adam to lead, he didn't. What we don't talk about is in that scripture, Adam was standing right there when Eve bit the apple. We think about it. Like in my mind, I picture like Eve went over there. She's like just doing her little thing, splitting through the forest, splitting through the, the Garden of Eden, find, stumbles upon the tree of knowledge. And the serpent tells her, oh, no, you know, this is all this great, you know, this, that, and the third, which shows you women are already in tune and can communicate easily with nature, right? Mm -hmm. However, what they don't, what in the scripture, Adam, it says that he was standing right there. Eve wasn't by herself when that serpent convinced her. So the leadership, so men, men want to blame women for original sin and all of that, right? But Adam was right there. He could have stopped her. He, he was the one who heard the voice of God or got the directive of God. Eve did not. Mm -hmm. Eve was just going off of his word. And mm -hmm. as we now see, could she fully trust it? Because my, he didn't stop her. So, see, of course, big, he got punished because he got the directive. And my biggest takeaway from it. Right. And this is something that I've I've been trying to talk with a lot of people about is, is when, well, you know, maybe not through this way, but um, they both hid. They both hid from God. And though, you know, and people get into the arguments about it, whatever. They both hid. They both clothed themselves and they both hid. And that is to me, you know, I think something that I'm, I'm hoping that people start looking into because it's like we send. You sinned, I fucked up, I sinned. We all had this whole little kerfunkle, but we both decided to hide. And to me, I relate that to this where it's like, we are hiding, we are hiding behind these sins. We are hiding behind these mistakes. You know, call it what you want, but we're hiding behind them. We're pointing fingers at each other when we both need to look and say, hey, yo, we fucked up. We we fucked up and we're way off path. We're way off yeah. tilt. And before the glory of what's right, Right. We know there's there is no society. There is nowhere anywhere that I don't think people are born without a sense of right. Righteousness. Right. Like, uh -huh. don't go around murdering a bunch of people. I think we all can agree. Every society, every culture, no, no matter where you're at, kind of kind of lines up with that. Don't don't go out and start just hurting, maiming people. Don't right. do this and that, you know. And so this innate understanding of what's right and wrong, we have that. And just because society may have said, oh, it's okay, don't worry about it. Oh, well, you should do this because they're doing that. Adam bit the fucking apple because she bit the apple. We're still fucked in the long run, dog. So don't do something just because they did it. That's how perpetual, right. perpetual suffering just continues and continues and continues. We need to look at each other and say, yo, we're hiding behind the things that we're doing. And, and like he play. handed her the apple. I mean, she handed him the apple. Yeah. He, he, which means he made the choice. A conscious right? decision. Yes. M men men want to act like she forced it on him or like he didn't have a say in it. Like, like she made him. Like what leadership is that? <laughs> what ownership is that? For real, you can't God, make man. the when you you heard the voice of God yourself and was told not to eat that. She could have ate it, and then you couldn't have. And then, then what would have happened? That's the real question. That's the real that's question. Simple. So that's, that's why I say, like men have to understand they they do have ownership in this one eleven right now. They do have ownership and responsibility in the direction of the life that we live and the direction that our society goes. Y'all are the real creators. We are the carrier of creation. We are the multiplier of creation, but y'all are creation, mm -hmm. right? So you mm -hmm. have the responsibility. That's why you have the responsibility of leadership and duty. It was mm -hmm. Adam's duty to make sure that they didn't eat from the tree, yet he stood right there as she went on in her like free willy nilly self. And because mm -hmm. feminine energy is dark energy, they're going to explore the depths. 
They're going to mm -hmm. challenge you. They're going to make you grow through contrast, through um, uh, accountability, through mm -hmm. you said this was who you are as a human being, and that ain't who you're being right now, so what are you doing? Mm -hmm. in, in the Bible, it is the faith and the, the, the eagerness of the, of the woman who actually, like all the stories that I've read now up until this point, it is the faith of the woman who actually pushed forth progress or, or made a huge impact or the man was able to go do something because uh, um, like, like um, Sarah and Simon the fisherman, right? Sarah was like, this is not the man I married. I don't, I don't, you, you've lost your faith. You're, you're cut off from God. You need to go out there and you need to find it. Mm -hmm. Now, most men would say that that is emasculating them. That, that to me in, in this day and age, that what she said would be the same as, uh, no, this is way more aggressive. I understand that, but it's as radical as saying, you are being a little bitch right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, get it together. You, you got to man up. You got to find your, and, but, and so when we say you got to man up, it's you got to find your face again. Mm -hmm. It's not you have to find your strength. It's you have to find your face because your faith, your strength only comes from your faith and your belief in yourself. Mm -hmm. So we, we can't give you that, boo. Mm hmm. And, but, but we can't, we can slap, slap you silly into it. Yes. 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 <laughs> and then once you're there, we can be soft again. So yeah. understand that this masculinity that we have is the gift and mm -hmm. the, the, the bridge to your empowerment. But also understand that the destructiveness is what caused the destructiveness in us because y'all truly do lead the way. Oh God, I need to, I need to do better. That's a lot to take in, ain't it? I've <laughs> I been, do, well, I'm, I've been on some rabbit holes, okay? I've been connecting some dots on this, man. Kayla, listen, you know, you know, I love you and I respect you. And I've always, you know, cherished the friendship that you've had with my sister and the way that you've treated my family, let alone me. Yeah. And, and, um, I might have to shake here, right? Uh, but I, I want to make sure I got a coaching client. <laughs> All right. And, and, but I, I want to make sure that I say that, you know, I, I value your life. Yeah. I'm, I'm thankful that you're alive and I'm thankful that you're, that you're progressing. Yeah. And whatever, whatever is next for you, I, I wish it in abundance and, and in God's speed. But um, if, if there's anything that you want to say before we go ahead and sign out, this is your moment. And uh, again, I want to say, uh, much love to you, sister. Thank, and thank you for coming on the show again. Absolutely. I I think I'd, I'd I think I'd like to leave a blessing. I want to I want to pull you three new affirmations for you to be able to go forward. Yes. Let me grab them. Oh, I'm so excited. All right. So um, what particular area would you like to progress in? Oh, God, all of it. But definitely, definitely, again, definitely this podcast. I think this podcast is going to be mm -hmm. my, my road to freedom. So this podcast. I want you to put your hand on your heart. And I want you to um, to listen for the first thing that comes to your mind. Um, what area of your podcast do you need support in? Dedication. 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 Okay, awesome. What energies do we does Putch need in order to support the dedication that he needs to this podcast? What energies does Putch need to support him in his dedication? 
Give me the whole name of the podcast again. The Smoking Section. The Smoking Section, right. Embracing worthiness, inspiring others. Okay. What energies does Putch need to support him in dedication to the smoking section? And this, w these sets of cards will also be relevant to anyone who comes and view, who, who gets to this point and views the message all the way through. They, this, this message will be relevant for them too, for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. I'm gonna do three. I want three. There we go. All right. So the three cards that we got were dispelling sadness, rewiring the nervous system, and cultivating courage. So the affirmation for dispelling sadness is I will feel better once I get the rest I need. Uh, relevant right yes so we say that five times I will feel better once I get the rest I need I will feel better once I get the rest I need I will feel better once I get the rest I need I will feel better once I get the rest I need I will feel better once I get the rest I need and you will be feeling feeling a visceral response in your body, true relaxation coming to your body right now. Yeah. When when sadness dissolves, you are able to acknowledge upheavals of emotion as profound healings taking place. As a result, mm. you are inspired to give your body the rest and rejuvenation it needs, rather than to push yourself in yourself into states of imbalance. As you dissolve sadness, you become aware of the vital role downtime plays in helping you recharge your energy field. This mantra is ideal for dealing with depression, fighting against time, and learning how to relax. So what I'm getting from this is you have to understand that part of your dedication is your recharge you should be dedicated to your recharge because you can't do shit. Your phone can't work if it ain't charged, can it? No, ma'am. Don't expect the same thing from yourself. Don't expect you to be able to give juice you ain't got. You mm -hmm. ain't got $5 in your pocket. You ain't got $5 to give. So you, you have to understand and stop shaming yourself for the dedication you need to have to the recharge. Mm -hmm. Understand it is a vital part of the process. What that recharge will do will allow you to rewire the nervous system. <laughs> <laughs> and that, oh gosh, that mantra is, I find strength in surviving my trauma. Oh my God. <laughs> this is glory. This is glory right here, right now. Folks. We'll say that five times. I find strength in surviving my trauma. I find strength <sighs> in surviving my trauma. Oh, my whole chest just popped. Heart opening and everything. I find strength in surviving my trauma. I find strength in surviving my trauma. I find strength in surviving my trauma. Oof. When the nervous system is rewired, you are no longer trapped in the memories of your body. You are, a, you are the courageous hero or heroine of your present reality honoring every moment of hardship as the means through which your infinite strength 
and greatest depth of character is revealed. As you rewire your nervous system, you are no longer responding to life from the vantage point of your painful past. But instead, you are open to each encounter being more miraculous than the moment before. Kind of like how this random moment now is so freaking miraculous, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh this gosh. mantra is ideal for adjusting to life after loss healing heartbreak, and becoming more optimistic. Okay. Now, what happens as we, 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 we face these devastating experiences in our life? We go through the upheaval. We go to the lowest depths of our despair. We have to deal with the child within us. And, and understand that they have been neglected and abused and have battered, you know, and, and ignored and repressed our entire lives. And giving that pain attention allows your whole body to change. Mm -hmm. As you dispel that sadness, because as you feel it, it consumes you. It burns you from the inside out. That's where, like, the phoenix rising from the ashes uh, yeah. saying comes from, you know. As you dispel that sadness and you allow it to come up and out, your whole nervous system rewires. You're able to calm. You're able to find peace and safety and security and stability within yourself. And as you find that, what do you do? Cultivate courage. <laughs> this is where the good stuff is. And the mantra for this, because as you rewire that nervous system and you are very clear as you go into every encounter, knowing who you are, going back to the beginning of the conversation, knowing who you are and what you stand for as a person and where your personal boundaries are, not needing anyone to be any other different way than how they are. In any given moment, you always know exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. Let's say that five times. In any given moment, I always know exactly what to do. <sighs> In any given moment, I always know exactly what to do. In any given moment, I always know exactly what to do. In any given moment, I always know exactly what to do. In any given moment, I always know exactly what to do. Many of you may be experiencing sensations very similar to Putch right now because this, this is new thoughts being inserted into your nervous system, new neural pathways being wired, new hormones being shifted, new, new states of being being created in this moment due to the power of this conversation that we've had. When courage is cultivated, you are aware of your choices and able to pinpoint your most inspired options with accuracy and ease. Oh, Such Jesus options, <laughs> Such options may not always match up with the things you want, but they will always give you the exact experiences you need to further evolve your soul. As you cultivate courage, you are stepping into a new frontier of soul expansion where life has permission to guide you forward into the fulfillment of your long-awaited destiny. This okay. mantra is ideal for breaking old habits, deepening your focus, and following your heart. And the energy that is on the bottom of the deck, which represents the overall read, is sharing shame. When I share my deepest pain, I give myself permission to be. 
What you've seen on this podcast today is I came with the fire of the pain and vitriol that I have been through, the trauma. I didn't hold it back. I wasn't ashamed to talk about it. I wasn't embarrassed. You've seen nothing but my true authentic self. This is no persona. This is no ego. This is me talking to you mano a mano as a human being who is functional and capable and and level-headed and kind and respectful and that that's who that's that's the goal mm -hmm. that's the goal to strive for that's peace knowing that i can walk with peace no matter the behaviors of others and this podcast gives a place for people, for the, the collective, for the world to share their deepest pain and give people themselves permission to be. Mm. So thank you, Putch, for existing. Because I've been wanting to put this conversation out into the ethers for a long time. I've been cultivating a lot of courage. I've been rewiring my nervous system. I've been dispelling my own sadness and my own feelings about me as a woman around this conversation, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that it's got the potential to bring a lot of healing and a lot of understanding and a lot of, you know, mutuality between the sexes and maybe like hopefully help lessen the battle of the sexes just a bit. Yeah. And you created that space. You, cre you as a masculine energy, created the, the container of safety for me to be able to flourish and to be myself and to be safe in your presence and to be able to talk about some of the, the darkest depths of, of our experience today. So thank you. And I love you with all of my heart. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you. Thank you. These are getting written down with the other ones that we have. <laughs> and they're, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, every time we do this, because I hope we can do this again soon. And every time, love we'll, it. I'll keep adding on. But again, thank you. 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 And, and good luck on all your endeavors. Yeah, because I know we talked about that a little bit before. But good luck on your endeavors. I know anything that you set your mind to, you're going to achieve it. And, you know, and, and I can't wait to celebrate you later. Yeah. And so. I can't wait to celebrate you. <laughs> all right, girl, I love you. <laughs> Everybody who's watched and who has been watching or will watch all that, this is Kayla Jean Oxenbein. Until next time, y'all. <laughs>